Is it there now? Yeah, you're good to go. Cool. So it is. Uh, good, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the first the Harbour Sports Club Development Opportunity 2021, uh, Planning for Success. Uh, my name is Tyrone Alkington, a Sport Development Lead at Harbour Sport, uh, and I'm joined today by Emily Hodges, uh, Sport Development Advisor and uh, Women and Girls Lead, um, and also Tony Mordaunt, uh, Community Connector and Sport Development Rep in the Rodney District. Uh, before we get started, usual protocol, um, on these things. So if you haven't already, please turn your microphone on to mute. Uh, if you haven't had, uh, sorry, if you have any questions, uh, please do so via the chat function and Emily will read them out. Uh, there'll be a couple of polls um, popping up throughout the, throughout the webinar. Um, so just feel free to answer those. The session hopefully won't go too long, so we won't um, take up too much of your time. Um, we'll also be recording the session um, for future use and also for, for those that couldn't make it. Cool, so the agenda for today. Um, so you've started off the introduction and we'll go through the objections of, this, of the session, and then go through the importance of planning, um, touch on a few different types of planning that um, organizations can be using. Uh, we'll then go through uh, some of those plans through working examples, um, and then we'll go through the next steps and resources and how um, where any further support is, uh, is needed. Cool. So the objectives of the session, so at the end, hopefully we can tick these off, um, is to highlight the importance of planning, particularly when working with volunteers, um, and identify various different types of planning. Uh, and finally, to work through some templates and show some real life examples. Sweet. Uh, just before we get started, it's going to launch a poll. Um, so for any, everyone that's on this webinar, um, could you please answer that question? So which of our Harbour Sport Club development opportunities have you viewed in the last 12 months? And if you haven't uh, viewed any, uh, don't worry about clicking. Actually, Emma, I found out I didn't put a um, none section in there. Cool, we'll keep that going live. So it's our first point, uh, the importance of planning. So obviously planning isn't the most exciting of topics, let alone a, a webinar on planning, but quite often the old adage, those who fail to prepare, prepare to fail, is about as blunt and true as it comes. And the importance of quality planning and living out those plans is crucial. So the first point there uh, in terms of planning, it gives you a process. So it gives you something to work, work towards, and to find that you want to think of somewhere where you'd like to be at a certain point in time and then you can work backwards from there to set out objectives and landmarks. So if I use it in a sporting context, it's, I want to be an All Black. Yep, so that's the end goal. So if you work backwards from there, what teams do you need to make? Uh, I need to make a Super Rugby team. You keep picking it back from there, so that's the, the team side of it. And then you can look at the physical aspects and mental aspects. Um, planning allows you to be forward thinking. So without adequate planning, your organization will likely deal with only immediate problems and may fail to consider future needs. So it's um, as it reads really, um, having the ability to, to predict what's coming or to anticipate um, will hold you in better stead when those minor problems coming up a la COVID-19. So having procedures in place for that. Um, Simplicity or to simplify things. Um, so a good plan should be simple and focused. So it can be as detailed as, as you want, but then it leads into the next one, uh, walking with the walk. So plans are designed to be lived, not to collect dust. So to put those two together, if you've got a simple plan um, and you live it out um, and you're constantly evolving it, you're constantly reviewing, uh, you'll be, you'll be um, going pretty well. So just a question out there, uh, what type of plans does your organization currently have in place? Cool, so I'm just gonna chuck another poll out there. Bang, so Em, feel free to 
comment as if you were um, down in Dunners. Tony, the same if you've got a uh, Walkworth Golf Club hat on. Reese, obviously, with your Halberg hat on. Awesome. So I'm seeing everyone on the on the webinar operational plan. Yep. So your day to days. Uh, next, couple of financial plans, marketing plans. Cool. Just be voted. Awesome. So these aren't all the plans that are available. Um, but the ones that we've identified that um, could be useful, especially in community sports. So if I just make my way down the list, so strategic plan um, lays out the overall purpose and direction of the club and how objectives will be achieved, usually long-term over two to four years. Operational plan, so detailed plan that maps out the day-to-day -day tasks. Management plan defines the structures, roles and responsibilities in organization. Financial plan, budgets, forecasting, cash flow, savings, Marketing plan, so the image slash brand or campaigns you, you're portraying to your membership or to your prospective, um, prospective membership. Volunteer management plan, so the recruitment, retention and rewarding of your, of your volunteers. Uh, sort of a new, sort of the buzzword that's coming around at the moment, so sort of ethnic engagement plan, so how you engage with diverse ethnicities in your community and how you can, how you can grow the member, membership base there. Uh, another one, women and girls, so ensuring fit for purpose facilities and programs, what are you doing around that? Um, especially around the recruiting and retaining staff there. Communication plan, so the way you communicate with your membership. Coach development plan, so providing a pathway for your coaches to upskill and develop. Health and safety plan, pretty self-explanatory there. You can throw um, your COVID response plan into there. And the other two, so daily planning. So that's personally, as a team and as an organization. The same thing for the weekly and monthly planning. And with all these plans here, uh, Harbour Sport, uh, your, the other RSTs and your RSOs uh, can provide templates um, and assistance for all these plans. So I know that we can do for that as well. Cool, are there any questions in the chat bar so far, Em? Uh, no, not so far. Cool. I'll just go back to then you're just watching so I don't want you to write anything but just have a think to yourself like how many of the plans that I've just talked about does your organization have in place and to follow that why or why not cool so the next part is we're going to look through um through some some of those plans and unpack them a bit further uh, we've got some templates and then we'll go through uh, with some real life um, examples to show you how you would fill them out and how it could be applicable to your organization. Uh, we've chosen strategic planning uh, because it's an example of how organizations can plan and think long term about where they have been and where they would like to be. And we've also put in a volunteer management plan and communications plan. Um, personally, I think these two are critical areas in, in um, community sport looking after your people and how you communicate to your people. So ensuring you have plans in place in those. Methods. Cool, and all the templates used um, will be available at the end of the webinar. So our first one is a, a strategic plan. So I kind of touched on it before, but what is it? It's a document that contains the purpose of why the club exists, the vision and the long-term objectives of the club. And why would you have it? It lays out the overall purpose and direction of the club and how objectives will be achieved over a set period of time. So if we just look down uh, onto the template, so we'll make our way down the list here. So if you could fill all these out, um, you'd be well on your way to um, developing a strategic plan. Probably one disclaimer is that with a strategic plan, because it's such a grand project, um, these things do take time and it does take more than just the, the CE or the chair sitting around 
um, the table with, with the other board members. It requires um, your membership to have input. It requires the, the community. Um, it requires everyone that works inside um, the organization as well. But we're just going to have a little sort of a high level um, look over this. So strategic plan. So you want to outline the purpose. So why your club exists and what, what you do. And at the same time, where you want to be, so, so your vision. And out of that, you want to come up with your values and beliefs. So how you will behave. So the everyday values, um, if you could rest your head on it and what the community would know you for, they're your values. And then from, from there stems out sort of where your focuses are going to lie over that next two to four years. So your priorities. So this one here, you've got people, places, price, programs. Um, in the next slide, I'll go through um, an example of, of the Harbour Sport ones. From those priorities is where you start to pull it apart and you're looking at your plans for the year. So what you'll do, do how you'll do it, who will be involved, when it will happen, and how much it will cost. So as you can see already, um, not everything will fit on that template, but um, and it's quite a, quite a big project. And then finally, so after all that, you want to ensure you know that whether you're hitting your targets or not. So that's where the measures part comes in. So how you'll know you're making progress. Cool. So I've, um, I've gone through our Harbour Sport strategic plan and I've, I've entered uh, just, a, just a, a small version of, of what's in there. So look up here. So strategic plan for Harbour Sport. So our purpose, so why, why our organisation exists, is to inspire, empower, and strengthen the community through sport and physical activity. Our vision of where we want to be is a community physically active for life. So with the purpose and with the vision, very high level, uh, very broad, but encompasses everything that we want to do. In terms of our values, uh, we've identified leadership, hitangata, so the people, passion and integrity being the, the way that we'll behave in, in all aspects of what we do. So in terms of our priorities, so these are changed from the ones prior. So the ones prior was people, places, price, et cetera. Our priorities line, increasing participation, quality experiences, being connected and in insights to influence. If I take the uh, be connected one as an example, so what we'll focus on is enhancing the links between partners and providers to network and share good practice. We look at our plans. So if we just go down below that, so what will we do? We'll create new relations, relationships and enhance existing ones. And the list goes on and on. And you can see there that that's only a small snapshot. And if we were to answer all the questions there, it is actually quite a grand document. And we've done some as Harbour Sport, working with local clubs and RSOs, and it's at least 20 to 40 hours of work. So. Big project, but in terms of the, the impact that it could have, especially over uh, the two to four years, um, it obviously uh, is, is a good one to, to really knuckle down and, and to put in the time. If we take all the information, um, it's been put into to this document here. So, so essentially everything that was on this sheet here, presented in a, in a, in a more professional way, um, that way it can be easily viewed to your community, to your membership, um, and it also keeps you accountable. So if we look there, our purpose is here. So inspiring and uh, empowering and strengthening the community through sport and physical activity. Our vision, our values are here, leadership, hitangata. Um, I missed out the other page. And then our priorities, so here, increasing participation and quality experiences, our plan, these two here, and our measurables, so by 2020. Yeah, so that, that's, that's a snapshot of a, of a strategic plan. Um, so it's a lot bigger than that, as, as mentioned before, but um, I know there are some, some organizations and clubs, community clubs especially, that. Um, ensure they have their strategic plans renewed and if you haven't um, perhaps it's something you should be looking to do cool so the next one 
volunteer management plan. So just a question to yourselves, how many of you have plans in place around the management and development of your volunteers? Uh, if, we, if we look at a volunteer management plan, so what is it? It's finding and looking after people who are key to the survival of your club from recruitment, development, rewarding and retention. I think these things, yes, essentially in, in community sport are hugely important. Um, the volunteers are obviously that the heartbeat and what keeps, keeps clubs going. If there are no volunteers, clubs will uh, soon disintegrate. And why do we have this? If volunteers feel like their efforts are worthwhile, they're more likely to be attracted to your organization and remain committed to volunteering for a longer period of time. Cool. If we just look at the template, uh, we'll just pull it apart. So it's sort of like the full cycle of the volunteer experience. So at the start, the recruitment, how, how you go about attracting um, your volunteers and, and, what, and what methods you go through. The selection and screening process, so that's around uh, the interviewing, the, the, the police vetting, see whether they're fit enough to, to join um, the club, because you just don't want any random coming off, coming off the street, you want to make sure that they're a good fit. The orientation refers to the, the experience or the, the first impression that they get when they, when they come to the club, because you want that to be a really positive experience. Hugely important as well is around the training development. Too often, uh, there are volunteers that come to the club and they're just stuck in one role. Um, quite often volunteers, whether it be young or old, will come to a club to gain experience. And if you can provide them with uh, training development opportunities, that could lead on to perhaps paid employment later on or to higher roles um, throughout your organization. The fifth one there is recognition. So just like the train development, you wanna make sure that volunteers uh, feel valued, uh, which keeps them coming back. And succession. So that refers to succession planning. So if you have volunteers um, leaving the organization, which, which they are always um, ensuring that their role is being filled, uh, whether it be through exit interviews um, or tapping a, other people on the shoulder to perhaps fill that role. So the example here that I've used is through a rugby club. Um, so if we, we'll just make our way down the list. So around the recruitment, so what are you recruiting? So we're looking at recruiting at senior coaches through social media channels. When are you gonna do it? In August, so at the end of the season, and then who's going to do it? So with a paid employee, it might be a director of rugby. If not, it might be the volunteer in charge. The selection and screening process. So what is it? It's going to be interviews are going to be held in October. The orientation. So this is their first time they come to the club. What is it? So we want to make sure the coaches feel welcome. And prospective coaches are going to be shown around the club, provided with history and a vision of the club. So that's hugely important, that step. You want that step to be um, a great first impression and um, to ensure that, that they feel welcome and that they're gonna buy into what you're trying to do. And when that, when is that gonna happen? So in the pre-season of the winter season, so January to February. Training development, yeah. So all coaches will attend Auckland rugby courses. So that's usually in early March. Uh, throughout the season, there'll be monthly coach development sessions. And then also throughout the season, coaches will be monitored and feedback will be provided as well. Who's going to be doing all of this? Uh, Auckland Rugby have been identified and they'll come along and help out when possible. Recognition, so ensuring that your volunteers feel um, included or they feel acknowledged. So a pre, perhaps a pre-season networking um, event where they can come together with the coaches that are already there and they, they can make them feel welcome. A further acknowledgement during speeches, so again, the MCs, the club captains and whatnot to acknowledge the coaches for the work they do throughout the season. And then at the end of the season, awards and functions. So perhaps putting on something for them to thank them for their support. As mentioned, the last one, succession planning. So that could be identifying potential coaches to internally fill spots, slots available. So it might be 
uh, a head coach of the senior team is leaving, you might be tapping the assistant coach of the senior team to potentially fill that role. For any outgoing coaches, uh, exit interviews will undergo um, just around feedback so you can, so you guys, um, sorry, so the club can grow. And then you go back and you re repeat the recruitment um, process to look in, uh, externally. And that usually happens at the end of the season. Are there any questions so far, Em? Or is it all good? No, we're all good so far. Cool. Awesome. And then our third one is a communications plan. So I put that question out again. How many of you have plans in, the, in place to communicate with your members? Are you going ad hoc or is there a, is there a plan in place? Um, so firstly, what is a communications plan? So it's a written document that sets out how you're going to engage with your audiences and stakeholders. And why do you do it? And why do you have it, sorry? To ensure that the organization will continue to operate efficiently without the presence of people uh, who are previously holding key positions. If we just look at, uh, so this is another example here, uh, a rugby club once again. So this is their, sort of their roster for the week, Monday to Friday. We'll look, we'll look at the club wide area. So this is the membership. And these interventions here, so chats from the couch, uh, varsity happy hour, varsity quiz, and the first 15 of the decade. These are their interventions that they're planning to release on their social media. So this is sort of the high level plan. And when we go to this one here, we, we begin to break it down. So we're using, if we go back, the chats from the couch segment. So imagine that we're clicking into chats from the couch, and this is what you see here down the bottom, okay? And then this is the template that was used. So this is a Harbour Sport template. So if we're looking at our audience here, so club-wide, so their membership, what are their objectives is, is engagement. So this was used throughout the first COVID lockdown as a measure to engage their audience. Uh, what's the message that they're trying to portray? is to speak with past, present and future members of the Auckland University Rugby Club. What medium or channels are they using? They're gonna use Zoom, Instagram and Facebook Live. When are they gonna do it? They're gonna do it every Tuesday and Friday at 12 o'clock. And what's, how they're gonna get feedback from it is gonna be the, the number of views and the comments that come up. Um, so you could do that for, for all your communications plans. It might be email, it might be if you're, if you're still sending out, um, if you're still sending out letters, you'll then put that into here. Sorry, down the. You then fill out the template. Cool. So there's obviously just just a brief run over of, uh, of of planning and why it's important. Just the summary is planning creates a process and creates accountability. So having that process in place um, ensures that anyone that's that's living that. Um, and so the organization, it keeps them accountable and it gives them um, almost a, a target and a, and a road to head down. Putting the time into planning saves you a lot of time down the track. So it's as it reads really. Um, you, it, help, it helps you run that future proofing and then if you're gonna come up to some, some problems along the way, you'll have measures in place. But the main one is the best plans are the ones that are action. So can't reinforce that enough. Yep, it's all, not, all well and done to do a very high detail plan and all the areas that I've talked about. But if that's just going to sit on the shelf and collect dust and you're not going to live that every single day, um, you're better off just throwing it out. So the best plans that are done are simple, they're focused, and the ones that are actioned. And as mentioned earlier, if you'd like templates or support, let us know. For further resources, uh, for further resources, uh, you can check the, the active website. So you just want to go to active resources. Um, in there, you'll find the ones that we've talked about today, planning, volunteer management, marketing communications. There are about nine other ones in there, which pretty much encompass everything to do with managing or running uh, a community sport organization or any organization. If you require further support, uh, first of all, I'd recommend you reaching out to your RSO. Um, so we've got, it's obviously like your Northern Footballs, Tennis Northern, Squash Auckland's North Golf. Um, you can also connect with your RST. So I'm pretty sure that 
everyone on this call is um, in the harbour area, so we're more than happy to help you out. Active are the regional provider, so they're also there to help out, but also if you if you know of friends or colleagues that are spread around in other areas, um, Sport Auckland, Sport Waitakere and CRLM are happy to help as well. Cool, and so our next club development opportunity is gonna be a workshop. So it's gonna be a grant funding, uh, usually the highest attended, um, obviously, because there's money involved. Um, why we're doing it, sorry, not money involved, but the best way that you can obtain um, successful grants. Um, we're also looking to get other, another funding organization <clears throat> in the room. And we'll also talk about uh, a couple of the grants that Harbour Sport administer as well. So that's going to be next, uh, sorry, Wednesday the 17th of February. Uh, time will be six o'clock or 6.30 and it'll go for about an hour and a half and that'll be a Harbour Sport in the function room. Cool, if there's any questions, feel free, feel free to, to jump on or to put something in the chat. Um, as mentioned before, my name's Tyrone. Here's my email. We also have Emily on a call as well. So feel free to give us an email um, or give us a call sometime. Following this, we will be sending out uh, some notes. Um, if you want any of the templates, um, feel free to let us know either in the chat or give us an email. Um, I think Emily has a quick survey which she's going to put in the chat, which would be great if people could fill out. Um, and as mentioned earlier, this has been recorded for future use. So we'll be uploading this to our website. Um, if you want to go back over and look over it or if you want to pass it on. Cool, so that's, that's it for the webinar. Um, hopefully it didn't take up too much of your time. Is there anything you want to add, Em? I've just put the link in the chat um, to the post survey. Um, if everyone could please yeah, make the effort to fill that out, it would be much appreciated. Cool. So as mentioned before, if you need any assistance around this, either contact your RSO or your RST. So if you're in the Harbour region, that'd be us. Um, and if you'd like any of the templates or any support, feel free to reach out and we're more than happy to help out. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, guys.